Hey everybody, hope you're having a good day today. So I'm going to do a little discussion about some tanks today. And I'm wearing this t-shirt, which I think I've worn in a few episodes of the Model Building Workshop. And I figured, why not explain what the Vickers 6-ton Type B tank is? Because I'm sure you're wondering, and I'm sure you've been wanting to know, right? Anyway, uh, so the Vickers 6-ton tank... Although this says Type B, actually, that's a Type A. Hey. <laughs> um, so the Vickers 6-ton tank was a tank designed in the 1930s by Great Britain, by the Vickers Armstrong Company. And while it went through different trials and evaluations in Great Britain, the British Army wasn't that keen on the tank, so they kind of put it up on the export market for countries around the world to buy, which many, many did. Uh, countries like China, the Soviet Union, Poland, Bolivia, among others, uh, bought these. So, let's start with this one here. So this is kind of what the original design kind of looked like. This is actually a T26 variant, a Russian variant, and what it has, it's got the two turrets, and I'll show this Polish variant in more detail in a second, but there was a two turret option, you know, which is kind of what this one is, and the two turret concept, which seems kind of odd to us today, but the thought being is that the tank would accompany infantry on the march, and when it crossed a trench, when this thing was crossing a trench, it could stop right over the trench and it could aim a gun down the length of the trench to the right and to the left and just, you know, strafe basically or attack anything that's in the trench while the infantry stormed over and cleared out the trenches. So this is very much kind of on the trench warfare concept, kind of a leftover thought from World War I. So that's what this design was. So these are very, you know, light tanks with machine guns was the initial concept. Oops. So Poland, you know, bought the Vickers tanks, but they decided that they would make some modifications to it. So they added a bigger engine and they produced their own versions of the tank known as the 7TP. And there's two types. There's a twin turret version and then there's Oh, single turret version. We'll get into that in a moment. Uh, so this one has, you know, twin machine guns and the twin turrets. And you notice there's this box up on top of the turret. And I had to research why this was there because I thought it was kind of an odd thing. So what this is, this is just a space because the machine gun is going to have magazines, you know, the ammo clips that go in there were so big they kept they couldn't fit in the turret. It kept bumping the ceiling of the turret. So they had to add these extensions so the ammunition boxes could clear the, the roof. So that's why it has this rather odd appearance. So these were used in the very, well, the very, very beginning of World War II when Germany attacked Poland. The Polish army had these, but not, they didn't have many. And, uh, then they had this one here, which is the other version of the 7TP, again with the improved engine. But in this one, they designed their own turret, and they bought these, uh, I believe, Swedish uh, Boffers cannons, which are 37 millimeter anti-tank guns. Also got a machine gun on the side here. So these anti-tank guns were, were quite powerful, and these were effective against German tanks. You know, because at the time, Germany was using mostly things like this here, Panzer II. And this cannon of the 7TP would be able to destroy this. Although, likewise, the cannon on the Panzer II, the 20 millimeter, could still penetrate the armor of this one. So, so it was still kind of a fair fight. But the 37 millimeter cannon was, was a threat to German armor. So, getting back to uh, the Vickers designs, so they had a, a single turret design too, which was like this. And they had a few different variations of this design. 
you know, other countries that had these, you know, this one's uh, Bulgaria, but Thailand had them as well. I think Portugal did. Bolivia, I think I mentioned, had them. And this is a Bulgarian variant. So on this version, it's got a small cannon and a machine gun here in the turret. It's a single turret. And uh, so this was the other design. So Bulgaria had these the late 30s, early 40s, you know, for the very start of World War II. Uh, they didn't use these for long. They were quickly able to pick up other armor from their German allies and uh, improve their tank for us as the war progressed because these became outdated fairly quickly. Again, Poland used you know, the single turret Vickers tanks as well, but they again created their own variants by adding a different engine, an improved engine. Again, the single turret cannon machine gun combo there. You know, you can see how different that that engine deck. Let's compare it to the Bulgarian one, which is more standard. You know, it's quite a, quite a different design there. And even the turrets are on the different sides of the of the hull. So so that's how that was progressing with the with that design. So the Soviet Union continued to make improvements to the, their vehicles designs, which were the you know the T twenty six. This is the A model with the twin machine guns, and then they kind of moved on to this one, which is kind of the the last in the line of the T twenty six variants. And this one now has a welded turret. It's got a more sloped armor to it, so it's more resistant to uh, to bullets and anti-tank rounds. The armor is still thin on this, so a Panzer II, like I just showed you a minute ago, I mean, Panzer II could still do damage to this tank, although we're now upgunned it to a 47 millimeter anti-tank gun, which is much more lethal than the 20 mil mil yeah, millimeter <laughs> gun on the Panzer II. So we're starting to get more of a punch in the T-26, though its armor is still very thin. So when the Germans invaded the Soviet Union in 1941, they came across many of these T-26 tanks of, of all types. And this was kind of the backbone of the Russian armor force at that time. But within, you know, the first year of the war for the Russians, they, they lost these tanks in huge numbers and uh, yeah they quickly got phased out because they just got destroyed within the opening rounds of the war. Some of these were still in existence in the Far East where these did do fairly well against the Japanese tanks and when they had a clash with Japan in 1939 in the Manchuria area these tanks did do well against the Japanese armor of the time. Of course the Russians also moved on to different types of uh, tank design, which were far better than these. But at the beginning of the war, a lot of these were still in use. So, I'm going to look at the uh, World War II Tank Encyclopedia by Jean Rastain, which is a really great book, which I refer to a lot. So, yeah, just a little heavy and awkward to hold. So here's the Polish versions, as I was talking about a moment ago, so you can see them. So, the Vickers 6 ton, yep, variations. And the 7TP at the bottom. And then we look at, <laughs> these are the T-26s, different variants of the Soviet Army. And you can see the earlier version from the uh, early 1930s has a different turret and this turret is riveted and it's got that uh, clothesline style uh, antenna system for the radios like I think uh, if you've watched the uh, the video I did on Japanese tanks it was kind of common in that during the 1930s this style of antenna system and then you can see you know we get into the uh, more sloped armor of the welded turret which comes in 1930-1940 and that improved model here. So a bunch of different variations of it. There. 
And then we have this series of books, which I like a lot, from George Forty, you know, renowned tank expert over in Britain. And he's got a book on tanks. He's got one on armored vehicles, like armored cars. He's got one on trucks. So he's got a whole series of these. And then these have some great photos from museums from around the world, as well as, you know, period photographs. So another variation of the T-26 was the flamethrower versions, which is what this one is. And here's one here of this model with the uh, welded turret. So, so lots of variations and spin-offs with the T-26 family. So that's a quick run through of what the Vickers six ton tank and its legacy is. Uh, for a tank in the 30s, it kind of spread into the 40s. It uh, was used by, like I said, by many countries and showed up in many different formats. And uh, yeah, was kind of a key tank in the early World War II era. All right, hope you've enjoyed this. Hope you got something useful out of it. And hope you've enjoyed looking at some of the things I built and had fun with. And I think that'll do. And hope you have a good rest of your week. All right, take it easy.